meant to be filming a bike fit Tuesday, so why have we got a bazooka? Bazooka fit Tuesdays. So I came here to film an episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays, but what are you doing? See, look, looks great. Let's talk about something that doesn't require the room. Footbeds. Footbeds. Let's talk about footbeds. <laughs> Today's episode, we're going to talk about insoles. We're not just going to talk about any insoles, we're going to talk about this insole as well. Mostly. Mostly. But this is the insole that I sell the most of. I guess I'd like to start off with Go on. one question first. Do you need insoles in your cycling shoes? I've never used insoles before I started cycling, so why would I need them now? Our support in cycling is a relatively simple concept. First and foremost, a uh, complete disclaimer, this isn't my theory, this is Steve Hogg's theory. He's a bike fitter in Australia, so kudos to him. Um, but I believe it, I think it makes a lot of sense to my mind. So it's basically all about proprioceptive awareness of the foot. All right, proprioception is your body's spatial awareness, is what stops us from walking into shit. Your body's covered in millions of proprioceptors, which are like sensors. Where? They're everywhere. Everywhere. Where? There are so many of these proprioceptors that your brain can't monitor them all simultaneously. So in order for one group of proprioceptors to be uh, noticed and monitored, they need to be stimulated. For example, you're not thinking about your left knee until I go like that and your brain goes, ah, oh, it's my left knee, right? Oh, it's my left knee. When you put your foot into a shoe, any shoe, you have a tendency of losing spatial awareness of the foot, all right? Which has a tendency of uh, potentially destabilizing the knees, the hips, and the pelvis. That's essentially what this is intended to do. It's intended to re-establish the connection between the brain and the feet. If I'm completely honest, I don't understand the, the full science behind it, but what I do know is that I've been able to prove using pressure mapping that I can reduce pressure going through the saddle by up to 50% just by administering arch support. So, you know, you're, you think you're having saddle issues and actually it could be something to do with the feet. So when I bought a set of cycling shoes recently, yep. they had insoles in already. What's wrong with those ones? That's an excellent question. Where they belong. Look at this insole and how supportive it is. There's no support to it whatsoever. So ski boots is an interesting concept. If you ski with any amount of regularity, you are considered a moron if you don't have art support in your ski boots. And yet we have scores, thousands, millions of people riding bicycles with no arch support whatsoever. The footwear is very similar. A ski boot doesn't allow any flexion of the foot and neither does a cycling shoe, nor, or, nor should they. Arch support is something that needs to be tailored to the individual. You can't uh, group human feet into three different heights of arch, arch support. So for example, there are certain brands out there that will offer a footbed and it will have high, medium and a low. So surely a custom footbed is the best option though? No? fully tailored to your own foot <clears throat> with one of those squishy machines where you put your foot in and go I have a number of issues with custom footbeds. Um, first and foremost, they're only as good as the person that makes them. I've made quite a few of them. I've done all the training, I have the tooling. Uh, I had the tooling until recently, I sold it um, because my issue with custom is it's expensive. It's unrepeatable. You can't get exactly the same footbed time and time and time again which is kind of one of the things I like about this. Thirdly, it's corrective, and I frankly don't like the concept of correcting people's feet for a number of reasons. Firstly, I'm not a podiatrist. There haven't actually been that many studies surrounding how a human foot interacts or moves inside of a cycling shoe. That is, that is kind of fundamentally my stance on them. I'm not saying they're bad. Uh, if they're comfortable and they work for you, great. Uh, there, are some, there are certain people who are making custom footbeds who do an amazing job. And, but at the same time, don't think that just because your local bike shop's gone and bought a, um, a footbed molding machine that they necessarily know how to use it or um, that they're gonna, make, they're gonna make you a good set of footbeds. You keep pointing over to these, what are these? Now we're not sponsored by these guys at all. You at do all. sell them at your shop, but you're, you're a big fan of these and I'd like to know why. Well, you and I have both ridden across countries with these, haven't we? What is it? it looks like Lego. This is a... Uh, uh, an Australian product. It's a, it's a G8 2620 modular footbed. Four different sizes of footbed, which are then uh, trimmable to a uh, to fit the size of your shoe. They're relatively wide, so if you've got a wide fitting shoe, the thing doesn't move around the side of the shoe. They then have five interchangeable arch pieces, five different heights, 
which are movable in both a fore and aft plane, but also a medial lateral plane, which allows you to get the arch support right in the place that you want it. It's a relatively soft arch support, so you can see that, and, and the, the thing to understand about this is that it relies slightly on the structure of the shoe. So if you put these into a shoe that doesn't offer a lot of support, I'm not gonna name any names, but there are certain shoes out there using like a woven fabric or like a sail material, uh, this footbed probably isn't gonna work very well in those. It relies slightly upon the structure of the shoe, but it, it adds a little, it's got a bit of spring to it. It's got a very thin forefoot, so it doesn't take up a lot of room inside of the shoe, and it's got a nice stable hind foot. Now, one of the issues I found, certainly with the custom footbed, is a lot of the time, when they're not finished properly, the back of the footbed, which is, the, you know, back of the foot, which is where a lot of instability tends to stem from, is actually domed. And what that means is the back of the footbed essentially is able to rock inside the shoe like this. And frankly, that's just gonna you know, create a hell of a lot of instability. So this is nice and flat. One of my favorite things about this is it also has the ability to fit and retrofit a wedge into the heel of it, um, which pops straight in, in, in place. If someone buys a set of these, you get everything in the box. You don't get the heel wedges, but to be honest with you, I feel this is the sort of thing that probably should be prescribed by your bike fitter rather than you know being you know self prescription but you get five different arch heights you get this funny little bag that you and i have never been able to understand really why they do it because you know what are you going to do carry all your arch pieces with them yeah at all times so if i've just bought a set of these i don't have access to a bike fitter and i want to try them myself and set them up for the first time where do where, where do i put what do i start with i would probably start with a level three they're sized in uh, from one to five, one being the lowest, five being the highest. It's quite uncommon for anybody to need a five or less than a three. So yeah, I find myself predominantly using the level threes and level fours, occasionally with a big foot if you've got a really, really high arch, level five. But start with start with a lower arch piece and just build it up. How should they feel when you've put them in and they're correct? Subjective expression, but mildly invasive. You should know it's there. I mean, it's almost it should almost be uncomfortable when you're walking in it. Going back to why I prefer it over a custom footbed is that it's the same, it's repeatable, it just comes out of a mold. I encourage people to come back on a you know, fairly regular basis, you know, treat bike fitting as a process rather than an event. When someone comes back for a follow up, one of the first things I do is replace your arch support. I've got boxes of spares and you just replenish that, it's easily replenished, it's significantly cheaper than having a brand new pair of footbeds um, fitted and um, away you go. The other thing is that it's a lot easier and quicker to administer. One of the issues with a custom footbed for me is that, I mean, I've only got three hours with a customer, and if I spend an hour molding their footbeds, that's an hour I can't spend dealing with everything else in, in, the, uh, in the session. And to be honest, a lot of people, they, they need three hours of, of actual analysis and engagement. I like the fact that this is very, very easy to administer. You get the right arch piece, you stick it in the shoe, you get some feedback from the rider, and away you go. There's, there's, no, there's no faffing around with the thing. I'm, I'm not being funny. I would say 95% of the people that leave here leave with a pair of these. Uh, most people that I have worked with prefer these to their custom footbeds and as I say having used this footbed I have been able to prove in certain instances that we can reduce make significant reductions in saddle pressure and optimize saddle pressure distribution using just this arch support so it's incredibly important to have arch support uh, just to be aware you can buy these on our online store as well perhaps the best way really though of, of of having one of these administered is just coming for a bike fit. Just you can again, you book him for a bike fit if you like. Again, well, we're we going to put a link below, down below to the bike. Yeah, okay. So we'll put a link down below to the to where you can book a bike fit as well. Uh, but we carry a really good stock of these, so we tend to we tend to fit them in almost every fit.